what is up guys in today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a currency converter app in ios and it's going to look like this it has a navigation title of currency pro plus and if we go ahead and enter a number such as 22.5 you're going to notice the live conversion happening at the bottom and we can also pick the from and the to currency so if we go ahead and change this to gbp for example we're going to find out that 22.5 gbp is going to be 26 euros. And of course, we can also change the two currency. So we can also see what happens if we change it to USD. And I just want to mention that this is an app perfect for beginners. So we're not going to be using any network requests. Everything's going to be hard coded and stored in the app. So it's a perfect opportunity to test out how this actually works. So the first thing you want to do is open Xcode and hold Shift Command plus N so we can create a new app. So. So go ahead and click on app, click on next and name this currency project or whatever you want to name it. And we will be using Swift UI and Swift as the language. Then go ahead and click on next. Inside here, pick a location you'd like to save your project to and click on create. Up next, we have to go ahead and click on our device over here and select the iPhone 13. Then we'll go ahead and minimize the sidebar and resume the update. Now the first step we're going to take care of is creating the variables and the UI. And then after that, we're going to create the functionality that converts the numbers. So to get started, we'll go ahead and create a state variable, which will be a private variable called item selected. And that's going to equal zero initially. So this is going to be the currency we decide to convert from. Then we can go ahead and actually just copy and paste that under, type in item selected to, and we're going to change the index to one. Then we'll go ahead and create a at state private var amount, which will be the amount the user inputs. And it's going to be of type string and initially set to nothing. Then private let currencies, which is going to be a fixed array of USD, Euro and GBP. And of course you can add your own currencies here, but I'll just be using these as an example. Next inside the body, we're going to go ahead and create a navigation view. And inside the navigation view, the first thing we should create is a form and a section. And the first section is going to take a header of type text, which says convert a currency. And I'm going to minimize this sidebar here as well, since it takes a lot of space. And we need to create a block here. Now inside here, let's go ahead and create a text field, which will have enter an amount as a placeholder text. And the text is going to be set to the binding variable of the amount. And we also want to specify a keyboard type, which is going to be of type decimal pad, since we want them to enter more accurate numbers. And right below this text field, we can go ahead and create a picker, which will take a selection, and that's going to be a binding variable of item selected, followed by a label, which is going to take the text of from. And then inside here, we need to insert the elements we want to loop through. So for each zero to the index of one less than the currencies dot count for index in text self dot currencies at the index with the tag of index. So this is going to loop through all of the elements. It's going to select the current element and it's going to place that inside here to be selected. So if we actually click on this live preview, if we click on the from, it's going to take us to a new screen where we can select new currencies. And we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it right under. It's going to be item selected two, and it's going to be the two currency. So as you can see, once we click item selected two, it's going to start at the index of one, which means we will select Euro and not USD because Euro is at the index of one. And finally, we want to go ahead and create one more section with a header that says conversion. And inside this header, we're going to insert a text that first is going to take the converted amount. So we'll just put a placeholder of zero. And we also want to go ahead and enter the currency selected. So currencies at the index of item selected two. And that should take care of displaying the information we want in the second bar although we need to move this quotation mark to the outside. And as you can see, the conversion is going to match the 
to currency. So now we have the UI in place, but we still need to work with the functionality because this UI does not do anything at the moment. We can enter a number and we can select the currency, but it does not show us the conversion. So to handle this, we need to go under our variables and create a function, a function called convert, which is going to take a nameless variable with the name of convert of type string. And it's going to return to us a string. And to get rid of the error, we're just going to go ahead and return nothing. Now we can go down here and type in convert, and we're going to convert the amount that gets updated. So it still doesn't do anything, but it puts everything in place to actually be converted. So now let's go ahead and finish the functionality in the convert function. So the first thing we have to do is create a variable called conversion, which is going to be of type double, and it's going to equal 0.0. .0 or 1.0 actually. Then we will create another variable called amount, and this is going to equal a double of convert. So it's going to pass whatever string we get as an input inside this enter amount place, and it's going to turn it into a double so we can actually process it. Then we need to let the selected currency equal currencies at item selected. And let's also go ahead and let the two currency equal currencies item selected number two. Then we need to go ahead and create some placeholder information for the rates. So let's go ahead and create some euro rates. So let euro rates equal an array of USD, or it's actually going to be a dictionary of USD to 1.15, which is the current approximation from euro to USD. Euro to euro is going to be set to 1.0 and GBP is going to be set to 0.84. So this right here is just dummy information that we can use for our converter. Of course, in a real application, we're going to be taking this from a API so that we can get the most recent conversion rates and make accurate approximations. But for this sample app, we're just going to hard code the values just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the other two I have. So as you can see, USD rates is going to equal a value of USD, which one USD to one USD, it of course is one dollar, and one USD to one euro is going to be 0.87, and so on. So just do this for all the values you want, and of course you can add your own currencies, and it's going to follow the same concept. But once you have all of these values, we can go ahead and create a switch statement, which is going to take the selected currency, and the first case is going to be if the user selects USD. And in that case, we're going to set the conversion to be the amount multiplied by the USD rates at the index of the two currency. And if something goes wrong there or it doesn't exist, we need to provide a default value of 0.0. .0. And to save time, we can just copy this and paste it three times. But of course, change this to Euro and this one here to GBP. Then we need to change this to Euro rates. So Euro rates and this one to GBP rates. And the compiler is never happy if we don't provide a default value. And the default value is not going to do anything interesting. It's just going to tell us that something went wrong like this. And the program is still not happy because it thinks that our amount can be something different. So we need to go ahead and add a nil coalescing operator and provide 0.0, .0 here as well. And finally at the bottom, we can go ahead and provide a string with a format of percent dot two f, which is going to take the conversion and it's going to format it to two decimal places. So as you can see immediately, now we see a 0.00. .00 and if we did it without the format, it's going to give us a lot of zeros if we enter a number. Now, if we go ahead and run the program, we can type something such as 2.2 and it's going to say 1.91, or we can even just add two, and it's going to format it for us. But there's actually still one problem we need to cover, and that is, depending on which country you live in, you're going to have a difference between 2.2 and 2.2. In Europe, it's very common to have a comma as the decimal, so this will not work on our app, which is going to break it. The program doesn't know how to understand this, so it's going to break. So we need to add a case that handles the comma instead of the decimal place. So go ahead and open the sidebar and hold Command plus N to create a new Swift file. And this Swift file is going to be called utils. 
And inside here, we're going to create an extension function. And this is something I found on Stack Overflow. You definitely need to always go to Stack Overflow if you have some sort of question or some sort of problem. You'll find answers very quickly. But for this case, we're going to create an extension function, which will extend string. And inside here, we're going to provide static let number formatter equal number formatter. And then we're going to create a variable called double value of type double which is the extension function. And inside here, we need to go ahead and type in string dot number formatter, decimal separator, and that's going to equal the dot, which is common in most countries. So if the result contains this essentially, dot number formatter, dot number from self, then let's go ahead and return the result dot double value. And in case it's not a dot, we need to also check that it is a comma. So else, and for the else statement, we can go ahead and copy the previous one and select it and paste it inside there, except we need to replace this with a comma, just in case there's a comma, of course. And we also have to return an exit code of zero. So this extension function will just take care of making sure that we can parse both numbers with the dot format and the comma format. So if we go back to the content view, we can go ahead and refer to this by going to our let amount dot double and providing convert dot double value. And thanks to that, we can remove the nil coalescing operator and this will allow us to also handle comma inputs. So now if we go ahead and launch our app, we're going to notice that we can enter numbers of decimals with both dot and comma notation. So for example, we go here, we're going to get the decimal pad. And of course, since I'm in Europe, I'm going to get the comma. So 2.2 and the program is not going to break. If you are in another country, most certainly you're going to have to deal with the dot notation. So 2.2 and you'll notice that it's not going to break even if we add the dot. So now we have two comma two and two dot two. And we can also change the two currency to GPP and it will do that. And we can also change it from Euro. So as you can see, we successfully created a currency converter app and we also handled a lot of the potential errors. But with that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.